is uh, he's a he's a doctor and deals with mental health he's a psychologist and uh, he has been very kind to us to come to this festival to speak about girish karnath ji as well as shruti ji try and in conversation with these two stalwarts is young obnijit sen this is his fourth session at the festival we thank him for that we worked him very hard and uh, over to obnijit on race way Good evening ladies and gentlemen it's an absolute honor pleasure and privilege to share the panel with two stalwarts uh, Shomik Bondopadhyay and Dr Mohan Akash and today we are going to discuss raceway so i have been given this uphill task of conducting this session so i made it simple for myself actually so what i have decided is um, i'll just turn the tap on and i'll just let the water flow i'll just listen to the stories the anecdotes the personal experiences that these two gentlemen have with none other than shotojit rai it's a centenary year we are celebrating ray and ray in different fields in literature in cinema in illustrations and i think everything will come up as a part and parcel of our discussion today so first of all thank you for being here it's the 10th edition of the tata steel kolkata literary meet and i'm honored to start the session and if i may start with you shomik sir I have watched that interview that you took of Shruti Ji Tray on Doordarshan for about like thousand times now. I can say I can recite each frame. I can say the dialogue, the questions that you asked, and the replies that man gave. But um, just before the interview, I want to say one thing: uh, that you and Bihar Shakraborty, you two spent several sessions with him. discussing about the nitty gritties of the interview the way he wanted to go about the interview the way you planned uh, on the interview because previously he had refused to give any interviews to doordarshan citing that doordarshan was not ready so please take us through that sessions uh, how how did you to plan about the interview and what happened backstage of that famous doordarshan interview uh, the 76 interview that i had with uh, manikta was a piece of history in a way because for uh, one whole year from 1975 when we had a doordarshan till 1976 late 1976 biparsh as a producer at doordarshan was desperately like any good tv producer trying to rope in manikda to give an interview and manikda resisted he said in his typical manner you haven't yet learned how to do it and until you have learned it i can't appear on your tv for a whole year he was resisting it and trust my friend bipasha's commitment insistence he took a wonderful position He told Manik the fair enough. But as a producer, I'm going to go on doing productions. That's my job, and productions of all kinds, interviews, plays, sports events, all kinds of things. And once I'm satisfied about a program that I've done, as a producer, I'm going to ask you to watch it. And those days, it was just. Three hours in the evening, and Manikda was not a person who travelled and went to now quite a lot, not too much. So he was homebound in his own way, and evenings were fine. So Bipas went on doing it. He would do a program, inform him, Manikda would watch it, and next morning religiously, Bipas would ask, "How did you like it?" This went on for nearly a whole year, and then one fine morning, after this review session, Bebar said, "Manikta, let me point out something. This is the fourth morning that you haven't had a single point to criticize about my program." 
and Manikta gave his loud laugh. And that was typically Manikta, a real toughing laughter. And he said, yes, you have caught me at it. And Manikta said, okay, fine, I'll do it. I know what you mean. And he could dictate terms at that point of time. And after that, one year's dogged insistence on the part of my friend Pipash, about whom you have heard from uh, Shomon in the earlier session, those of you who were there. So Manikda dictated his terms and said that I should be doing the interview. And he said that the two of us, just the two of us, Manikda and me, we would have two exclusive long sessions of conversations to start with. The first day I went, he said, shoot your questions and I'll give you my prompt immediate answers. And if fresh questions arise from the answers, welcome, go ahead. That's how we do a run through. And I said, fine, but this is the first occasion and that's why I said it was history, that you are addressing a large audience in India, a TV audience for the first time ever in India. And do you have any statement to make for the first time to this large audience? Share that question with me so that I can pose it in a manner that you can give your answer, you can make your statement. So that was a deal we had and we had a run through. At the end of it I asked him, well, your statement? So that I can phrase a question for that? And he hummed and hawed for a little while and then said, well, like Chaplin, and these are the words he used, like Chaplin. I am the only director who handles and controls every aspect of the making of the film. The script, the music, the visualization, the acting, everything. Why don't you ask me why I do it? why I have to do it, while directors all over the world can distribute the duties and responsibilities to other people. I jumped at that and said, well, six months ago, I interviewed Sir Richard Attenborough for the Duradarshan when he had come to shoot in Kolkata for Shatran Kikilari. And at that point of time, Though a lot of you would know Sir Richard better as the director of Gandhi. But at that point of time when he came down, he was directing his second directorial work. Until then, for more than 20 years, he had been just an actor. A wonderful actor, but an actor. He was into his second film when he came down to Kolkata for the shoot. A bridge too far, it was shooting in Norway, and the shooting was going on. As a matter of fact, the part of the Russians came down to Kolkata, and he watched and studied and tested the Russians at the Indrapuri studios, while he was shooting for Shatrajya. So I had asked Sir Richard, now this is your second directorial work, and you are a new director, and how do you look at this whole situation of a veteran actor working with a director with whom you had never worked. And you've just become a director yourself. This conflict, this tension, and this whole situation, why don't you talk about it? And Sir Richard had started his answer. Like Chaplin, he is the only director who handles everything about the cinema 
And this is the first time I've got a director who works like that. Because I never worked with Chaplin. So I decided and suggested, which Manik the laptop, that we do that little bit of a clip. Where I asked Sir Richard that question, and Sir Richard starts like Chaplin, just as Manikta had started it. So we had this run through the first day. We had a second run through because we wanted to, or Manikta wanted both of us to ponder over it and then finalize. That's the kind of man he was. He wasn't satisfied with a quickie a quick, immediate, singular decision. A lot of thought, a lot of ideas, a lot of mind went into it with passion. So we had a second run-through and a third run-through with Bipash. Because you should be aware when you watch a, a portion, a small fragment of the interview on the YouTube, as some of you must have seen it by now, that the technology that we had here for the TV at that point of time, we couldn't make any cuts or joinings, no editing. It had to be shot at one go. So, and we had just one camera, and a camera which was set on a trolley outside the studio, and the studio opened out to the camera, a single camera. Manikta and I sat together, virtually side by side, but facing each other, chairs like this at this distance, not more than that. And next to us, there was a screen. So if we had to have clips from films, the camera would shift from us and shoot the screening, the clips, on the screen, and then come back to us. So that's how it was shot, a 55-minute program at one go. So a wonderful experience, and uh, the only, because my young uh, moderator said that he was looking for anecdotes also, the one interesting thing that happened, at one point when the camera had just shifted to the other screen, and Manikta and I, we were together, and nobody could hear us, he looked at my kurta and, and smiled and said, I seem to know this. I said, yes, that's the only kurta I have that suits the color demands of the black and white Duradarshan of the time. And so I wear that kurta every time I do a television program. And you must have seen my Richard Attenborough interview. It's the same kurta. I can't help it. So that's a little joke that we shared. And then we had instruction from Bibaj, and we were back talking serious cinema. It's actually. I'm have, I don't know about the audience, but actually I'm having goosebumps right now listening to this experience. But um, Shominda, you must uh, you know, um, inform us about the kinds of actors he said in that interview that he deals with, his working process with different kinds of actors. You, you must take us through that journey, Shominda. Uh, one of the questions I asked him, and uh, that's something on which I'd like my very, very old friend Mohan to comment and respond. I asked him at one point, well, you've handled so many kinds of actors, veterans, real veterans like Choni Baladevi, actresses with an IPTA background, like my sister-in-law, Koruna Bandhapadhyay, who did Shad Bajaya, and the young Opus, Shubir, and uh, Pinaki, and then Sharon, and then Shomitruda. You've acted with Mani Srimani, veteran actor whom I'd seen on stage with Chishik Kumar Bhaduri. And you've acted with complete newcomers. How do you handle your actors? 
Manikta took on this mock pompous stone and said, I have six different methods. And the word method he uttered very ironically, mockingly, methods. One, for the professional with talent. Two, for the professional with no talent. Three, for the new actor with talent. Four, the new actor with no talent. Five, the child actor with talent. Six, the child actor with no talent at all. So, how did Manikda treat you, Mohan? Hello. If I have to speak about Manikda, it's like drop in the ocean. Because first of all, I did only one, not even film, telefilm, with him of 52 minutes, short gati. And this was way after he was already recognized as, as the master. So I didn't dare to ask him how he chose me. Because I didn't want him to have other thoughts. But one fine morning, I happened to receive a letter, which I believe you should be able to see on the screen. Yes, uh, can we have the letter from Dr. Agashi on screen, please? If you don't see it, I'll read, read it out. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah we have scanned it, so no, that's no problem. Yeah, uh, can we please zoom it? Can we enlarge this one? Or will this be the size? Okay, I think that's it. Yes, there it is. Sir. There it is on the screen. Yeah. So this is 7th of July, 1981. He requested it's a half-page letter, not even full page, that I'm doing this telefilm and I would like you to play one of the two main leads. Right? And I'll be happy if you could accept my offer. He has already expressed that that time I had come out of the hospital with cervical radiculopathy. And the kind of uh, illness which Manikda also had, cervical spondylosis. And so he he expected that by now I'm fully recovered and can accept the offer. So I didn't want him to find any reason to refuse me. So promptly I responded saying, I'm fully recovered, though I had not. <laughs> and you should not even request an offer, you should order me that I will do this. Now with these two things, we started and then I probably thought why he might have chosen me because he had till then seen only one play of mine that was Ghashiram Kotwa. That was 70A when we were in Kolkata for the first time for uh, Brecht 80th year. Brecht 80th year. We were invited to show our Team Paishasa Tamasha, which was done earlier by Ajitesh in Poshir Park. And since that was a huge group, 60, which could accommodate all the cast of Ghashiram also, I decided to also bring Ghashiram Kothwan, and Shambhuda, of course, helped me to do that. Manekda, I went to invite him, and Manekda, like he said, plainly refused. She said, when I'm working on my films, I don't go anywhere. Right. So I was very disappointed. When Jabbar arrived, we went again and said, you come at least for five minutes. We haven't come all the way from Pune, only for Marathi-speaking audience in Kolkata. But we want people like you to come and see. And if you have no time or you don't like it, no questions, <laughs> but you just make your presence felt. 
he came for the play stayed on not only for the play one hour after the play talking to all the actors and cast and crew which is amazing now as you can see the clang association the play i did was ghasiram kotwal right? and the story of premchand shodgati the, the character of a brahmin is named ghasiram so maybe probably <laughs> yes that association reminded him <laughs> and also maybe some bad qualities <laughs> which he must have observed in me in the play okay. and so I, that's that's the reason why i think he must have asked me because earlier shama said he had suggested my name for a small role in shatranj ke khiladi but he said no and and farooq sheikh did that role with shabana so i know for sure that most of the good directors do not compromise on whom they want to cast and they manage to get them this is why so that must be the reason i think he casted me and uh, but as far as the care as he says he takes to how to handle actors he probably suspected what kind of thing we i may encounter difficulty way before we started shooting and in his last letter to me the reason i am showing this letter is you know this is a type written letter typed by himself and after we agreed he switched to hand written letter in his third letter <laughs> so that shows that also speaks for the relationship he develops with his actors and he says oh you can read this uh, which one you want to read yes yeah. yeah, so here ray goes on to write the action of doing aarti with the right hand while ringing the bell with the left is a difficult one as it may need a little practice do you think you could devote some time to it this is this is what he writes in his letter see the detail and that time or the same experience om and me we had when we arrived in raipur on train and the train tickets came by registered post to us and since we realized the only person who knows us is manikda and we don't know besides manikda any person in his team so the best thing for us would be to stand in the door so they would know at least om and recognize us so as the train got into the station we fully flooded with people only one head coming up of all and that was manikda <laughs> both of us were shocked and we came when we came to hotel we said why you had to come to station we would have you know no you are my actors i have to come but then i knew why he did because the moment we reached hotel first thing we did had to go to his room then you were doing the sketch and deciding whether i should have mustache or not whether i should have hair cut or not and everything and once that was done he allowed us to go to our room so the meticulousness with which his work as if he was making his first film which is amazing which is amazing because i have seen directors after one so called good film start behaving as if they are masters on that backdrop to work with him was really a lifetime lesson for me not only in acting but to know what film is as a medium big round of applause ladies and gentlemen i actually i cannot believe the fact that i have just held a letter written by ray himself to dr mohan agashe and it's giving me probably so this is going to stay with me for the lifetime 
this is absolutely amazing. And a lot of you might not know that… There is another reason why I showed this letter. Yeah, please. You say, how in those times film units worked and what were the relations between director, actor or the whole team, it was like a family, because I am asking him to project the other one, the most recent contract, yes. which is 20 pages. Right? Yes, uh, can, uh, can we have the second attachment please on the screen? That was uh, given to us by Mohan sir. So where we have come from a close-knit family of film unit to this slavery kind of a contract between the producer and the actor. This is unbelievable. I thought this is, this obviously is a copy of some American contract. And probably this has been drawn way back when they got slaves from Africa. <laughs> and it's only applied to films now. It's amazing. <laughs> so that's the reason. That's what it makes Manekta stand very high as against all these stupid things in filmmaking now. Thank you. Absolutely, as you can see. A lot of you uh, know, and I don't know how many of you don't know that I'm continuously calling him by Dr. Mohan Agashe because he's a psychiatrist himself. So here is my next question to you. Uh, how did you analyze or, you know, how do, how do you analyze the psychology, the working methods of, I mean, not only while he was shooting, but you know, while he was talking with people, talking with his art director, talking with his sport boys, talking with his makeup man. So how do you analyze the psychology of him? You being an established psychiatrist yourself. How do you analyze psychology, the working methods of prayer? Thank you. You know, but he asked me to act in his film as an actor and not as a psychiatrist. And to give you a real answer to your question, yes. once Freud was asked to analyze Thomas Mann, and the answer he gave, his analysis is not important to us than his literature. So similarly, only a fool will waste time in trying to analyze Manikda. It's better to appreciate and see if you can learn anything from it than to analyze. Again, as I your analysis is cerebral skill. And film obviously is not only cerebral skill, it's a combination of all sensory skills and cognitive skills put together. I don't think even a competent psychiatrist would, unless he interviews Manikda for a very long time. Because as doctors, we are not Jyotish. If we want to analyze a person, unless he cooperates and gives us a lot of information, we are not able to analyze him. I think his dedication and his art was far more important to us than his analysis. So I never tried to do that stupid thing at all. Thank you. But Mohan, as a man of theatre and as an actor in both theatre and cinema, the spell that you had with Manikda, beginning with Sadhgati and the later films also, uh, what are the lessons or what are the kind of things that you found useful as a man in theatre and cinema later on? Did it make any difference to you <laughs> after working with Manikda? At that I, level? I learned one thing, for sure, 100%. That if I have to act in film, I better choose the right director. <laughs> and if I have to work on theater, it doesn't matter who is the director. <laughs> because theater is the actor's medium. Whatever he might have done in rehearsals and everything, once I enter stage, he can't do any damn thing to my performance. And the actor dominates. And a fine actor and a bad director can make a good play. 
But if you have a bad director and the best actor, you can never make a good film. Because the performance of an actor in a film, his contribution is probably only one third. And the director and the editor decide how to make performance of an actor because he puts all the pieces together and he creates a performance. And Manekda was excellent in that. Probably if he realized that he is not able to get what he wants from an actor, he would find a device where nobody else notices, but he does. You don't notice the actor is not on the screen, but you feel he is acting. And for that, I will give you one example which he didn't have to execute, but I have known it. Those, and most of you have seen Shodgati. There is a scene when Nashiram Brahmin comes from the Basti, Chamar Basti, back home, requesting them to take the dead body. And as he is approaching, there is a group of Brahmins whom he wants to avoid like he wants to avoid his wife. And those were local actors. So Manekda wasn't very sure whether in that spell of time he would be able to get the performance. So in his khata he already had managed two ways of doing the scene. Fortunately he got good actors. So in the film you see these Brahmins coming with the chata and they have conversation and then he asks them, please go home and I will let you know when the time comes. But the way he had worked out in the script, if they don't come, in the first shot he would show me coming in with a chata toward the camera and as I enter gradually I disappear and only chata remains. Then in the second shot, there are about five or six chatas coming from all directions near this single chata. Then there would be exchange of conversation only on sound. And after his last sentence that you please go home and I'll inform you when the dead body is taken, six chatas leave in different directions. And the first chata of mine, I come further in the same line to go to my house. I said, you don't have to be a good actor in the hands of such a director. And uh, I think it was because of him that he can turn an average actor into an excellent actor. Right. And he was very, that's the reason he was very comfortable with the actors he handled also. Right. So this is the difference between acting on stage, acting in cinema, and one would wish that one would get directors like him. So even if you are ordinary, you can pass off as an extraordinary. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, Shomikda, since uh, Mohan sir uh, spoke about the khata, so you, we, we have to talk about it. I mean, his illustrations, his, his screenplay, the way he worked, the way he prepared himself for a film. And if I may ask you with one reference to him, that he's, he just spoke about analyzing, that you better analyze the literature, not the man. So if you just can take one iconic character from Lay's literature, Lal Mohan Ganguly, if you can just take Jota you, probably, I don't know, you'll be able to answer it way better than me, that uh, was this a first time that after a person has acted in a certain, as a certain character in a film, the illustration changed completely. I mean, post Shonar Kella, we see the illustration of Lal Mohan Ganguly, of Jotayu, becoming closer and closer to Shantosh Tatto. And in Dr. Munshi Diary, we see this sketch, where the hands of Jotayu go up, and Penguin, North Pole, Thakana, Thakya, South Pole, and we see it completely resembles Shantosh Tatto. So, you know, how do you analyze that aspect of it? I mean, the illustrations, his literature, and his films all coming together. Uh, since you mentioned uh, Shantosh Babu, uh, whom I had seen as an actor before, I saw him in uh, Manikdar's films. And uh, anecdotally, 
I have a wonderful memory back from 1955, the year of Pothit Machali. Uh, something that had never happened in the history of Bengali cinema as such. Immediately after Pothit Machali, the, 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 the tremendous popular impact that it had, its originality, its power, its earthiness altogether. There was a series of public receptions for the Pote Pachali team, Manikta and as many members of the team as people could bring together. And I remember an occasion close to my place in South Calcutta where there was a reception given to Manikta and company. And the people who gave the reception, they did the formal part of it, making gifts, offering gifts, uh, reading citations, and things like that, initially. And after the formalities were over, they offered the Patipachali team two cultural items. The first was a series of songs sung by a legendary Baul, Nobuni Dash Baul, father of a much better known son, Purno Dash Baul. But the old Nobuni Dash Baul sang fabulous repertoire of songs, and this was followed by a show of Cholo Chitto Chanchuri, a play by Shatujit's father, Shukumar Rai, directed by Shobita Pratadatto with Shantosh Dotto playing the major role. And uh, my sister-in-law, as Shadwajaya, was part of the team and that's why we were there, fortunate enough. And after the performance is over, the actors were taking off the makeup and Manikta waited with Shubrutada, Bongshida, my Bodhi and the others, whoever were there. And we waited and chatted till Shantosh Babu came out without his makeup. And uh, you remember Shantosh was quite short. And Manikda from his towering height. And in those days, he had a gesture. Manikda was initially from when I first came to know him in the 50s, a shy person, a gentle, reserved, shy person. And one of his favorite gestures, an uncomfortable gesture, he would bring in his right hand here and put his left hand above that, take it up to here, quite awkwardly, it didn't look nice. But he could carry it through because of his height and presence, maybe. Otherwise, it would have looked quite clumsy, in fact. And that's how he stood, towering up there, looking down at Shantish Babu. And with a smile, he said, Baba Nishchui, Apna ke bhebe likhe chile. For the Cholachit, the Chonchuri role. And that was, again, history. The moment Manikta saw Shantosh Dotto for the first time. And, what a story, what a story. And uh, the powerful impact of it. And that impact stays on and leads to the very conception of that character. Manikta came to writing much later. And, but the creation of Lal Mohan Babu was a part of his writing career, his writing history, not so much his film history, and then from writing to the film. But the impact of that, and the impact of a stage performance, Babu Dulal in Chalajit to John Churi, a fabulous performance, directed by Shobita Brutadotto, a director, unfortunately, forgotten. And that image 
once he starts working on it, and the way you heard from Mohan, the way he works with the character, with all the small details, and even helping the actor to come to terms with it, warning Mohan of the uncomfortable situation of ringing the bell and doing the arti together with two hands. Take care of that. Turn it into an exercise for the performance. So with this concern, with the narrative, and with the features, Manipur was not a painter. Let's be very clear about it. Manipur was a designer, designed a situation, designed the people in contact, in interrelationships, into the connections they made, and the shapes and the forms come out of that. And that's what makes his drawings, his sketches, his work on the Kedor Kata so important and so vital. To the point, I again remember anecdotal but piece of history. When he did Satgati, and once again I had the privilege of doing a 10 minute interview with Manikda on the occasion of the first ever telescreening of the first ever tele feature film made by Duradarshan, Satkati. We didn't have the satellites then, so there was no way you could use the satellite to screen simultaneously all over India. But the cassettes were sent to all the stations so that they could simultaneously telecast it. And as part of that telecast, I had a 10 minute interview with Manika. And we spoke on Satkati. And he told me on that occasion, not in the interview, but when we were having the discussion before that, that to get the feel of Premchand's story, he had read it in translation first, where he discovered the story, then read it in the Devnagri script, which he could read, of course, but couldn't write at that point of time, or hadn't ever written it. But then he made it a point to copy the entire text. It's a very short story, you know, barely four pages and a half or something like that. He copied it in Devanagari, in his Kherur Kata, to get the feel of even the letters of the text. He had got the story, okay. But more than that, the story. He needed the tactile feel of the letters of the language. So the way he conceived, the way he worked with the texts, with the tones, with the language, the tremendous, overpowering visuality of it all. It had to be there before his eyes and he should be able to shape them, carve them, write them with his fingers. That was so central. And that you feel in his best films. This has been nothing short of, of an amazing storytelling session. We're we are almost at the end of this session. Raise way with Shomik Bandhubadhyay and Dr. Mohan Agashe. We have time for two, three audience questions, if anybody is interested. And I request the volunteers to hand over the mic if anybody has a question, or else we'll close the session. Does anybody have any question? Uh, hello. Thank you for the wonderful session. Um, from your stories, uh, we once again uh, have a reforming sense of what a great personality Ray was, what a great director he was. But my question to both of you would be, do you have uh, anecdotes, stories to tell us, uh, to convey us a more uh, human, perhaps a little annoying side of Ray? That's a very interesting question. 
Yeah. I happened to be in Kolkata the day he finished the script of Uttarana, the film which had to be completed by his son. And he was exhilarated because the, we reached and he had just finished the script. And myself and my playwright friend Satish Alekar went to give him a courtesy visit because I used to bring ginger biscuits from a famous Kayani bakery from Pune, which he loved. So not even once I missed presenting him with, and, and every time he saw those biscuits, his face like, so he was very happy. And then he, he just told us that he just finished the script. And we said, what? And then for next one hour, 15 minutes, he went to tell us the entire script. But the thing was, when he was saying, it was like he was telling the script to himself. I don't think he registered that we were there. Or not even Baudi was there. <laughs> because at one point, Baudi started to intervene, trying to do some correction or something, and he got as if he woken up from sleep. Somebody said, Oh, you keep quiet, you don't know anything. See? <laughs> and then <laughs> that was the first time I've seen him. Like, but that liberty he could take only with two people, body and Punuda. Punu was his assistant. And if something happened which he didn't like, he didn't shout at the actor at all, right? Or anybody at all. But Punuda was this. <laughs> so that was his human side. And I know Punu knew it. He loved Punuda. But Punuda had to take all the thrash, blame me kind of a thing at anything. That was the human side. Loving ginger biscuit was human. And third, most important thing. And I learned it from him. I'm still practicing it. I will have to give up soon. Whenever I called him on phone, he personally took the phone. There were no secretaries, there were no people taking money that this is Mohan Agashi, would you like to say? No nonsense. He would take, you saw Tojitra, I speak, better. And if he was busy, he would clearly tell he's busy and everything. This is so amazing in today's day. A person of that stature taking a phone call himself and giving a true answer. Right? Amazing. How many of us do that to me? We don't even answer phones now. <laughs> Thank you. Taking a cue from this Shomikda, uh, I have heard not only did he answer phone calls himself, he even opened the doors of his house himself. So, can you please shed some light on that? You must have tons of stories. You must have. Uh, one story and uh, with that we should close this session. Uh, every time I had gone to see him, uh, he would come up to the door and uh, open the door and show us out. I remember a very special occasion and uh, something wonderful that he said and something with a touch of sadness about it as it lingers in my memory. Uh, this was back in 1988. Uh, he was not keeping well. He had had his bad spells, a number of bad spells before that. And uh, I had taken Naum Kleiman, who was the direct, curator director of the archives of the great Soviet director, Sergei Eisenstein. I'd been there to the archives in 87 and had met and come to know Naum Kleiman, a great archivist and an authority on uh, Eisenstein, and he had come down to Kolkata in 88, and I'd taken him to see Manikda. And we had had a long conversation, 
And then Manikda had come up to the door to see us off. And as he stood there, and we had talked for more than an hour and a half on Eisenstein, and Rai's great admiration for Eisenstein, including one story which I can't help re-relating. Uh, when the Calcutta Film Society began in Kolkata in 1947, two years after that in 49, uh, the Calcutta Film Society acquired a 16 millimeter print of Eisenstein's masterpiece, The Battleship of Temkin, from the London Film Society. And it was a gift to the Calcutta Film Society and it was being screened at different houses of Radha Prashad Gupto, Chidananda Dash Gupto, Shotajit Rai himself and others. And that day when we were chatting with Kleiman, Manipa told us that on the 23rd occasion that they were watching Battleship Potemkin, that 16 millimeter version at somebody's house, Manipta had decided to make a selection of his records of Western music. He had a fantastic collection of this old 78 RPM revolutions per minute records. We played for three minutes only. And he had a fabulous collection of the great Western classical music. He had chosen these three minute pieces three-minute records in a hand-cranked gramophone, which you had to go on swinging the handle, and he had his own gramophone. He had taken it to the screening, and he went on playing this music. So providing a musical accompaniment to a masterpiece like Battleship of Temkin. And Kleiman was excited, and he said, do you remember the pieces you played? And man is, oh, I've forgotten it all. And Naam said, what a tragedy. It would have been a different score because two great European musicians, Edmund Meisel in Germany and Dmitry Shostakovich, had composed independent scores, which are now put on the films and played with the films. So there would have been the third a composition created, orchestrated by Manikta. So that story he had shared with us, and then, so all this was there, hanging in the air about us when we came up to the door. Manikta opened the door and stood there, and the last words he told Naum, I wish I had a chance one day to sit in that room where Eisenstein sat and worked for one whole day. And I hope something would have fallen upon me. What words? And Naum said in parting at the door, next time you're in Moscow, give me a call. I'll come and take you there, open the door, bring you in, and put up a sign, no visitors today, and leave you there for the rest of the day. It never happened. Manikta fell ill and more ill, and then the end came. In the climax scene of Nayok, Uttam Kumar asks Shormila Thakur, Apni gulo leaklen na? Shormila Thakur says, Mone rekhe devo. That's exactly what I want to say to my two distinguished delegates and to all the people who are present here. Raise way with Shomik Bandhubadha and Dr. Mohan Agashe. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, uh, sir, Shomikta, uh, Mohan sir, and Ogni. Thank you so much for joining us here today. 
uh, it's been the first time that all three of you have been at the festival and we hope that it's the first of many many times thank you so much uh, see you all tomorrow for the last and final day of Tata Steel Kolkata Literary Meet in association with Victoria Memorial Hall thank you and good night <laughs>